Okay, so now we have how to solve a quadratic equation. Actually, it's pretty simple process. Now that we know the formula, we can do it. And of course, you have been doing it in your high school too. Now, suppose you have a quadratic equation, say x square plus um, say 9x minus 4 is 0. How do we solve this equation? We need to find the roots. We know we need to find out b square minus 4ac. So b square minus 4ac in this case is going to be 9 square that is 81 minus 4ac. 4 into minus 4 into 1 into minus 4. So it's going to be 81 plus 16, 97. Then we need to solve the equation. So once again if you revive b square minus 4ac is a positive number. If it's a positive number, next we check whether it's a perfect square. Well, it is a perfect square. No, it is not a perfect square. It is positive but not a perfect square. So what do we have as a nature of roots? Rational or irrational? Well, it's going to be irrational. So the roots are going to be irrational. So we know the formula x is equal to minus b plus or minus root b square minus 4ac upon 2a which is going to be minus b is of course minus 9 plus or minus root b square minus 4ac that is 97 upon 2a that is 2. So in other words one of the roots is minus 9 plus root 97 by 2 the other root is minus 9 minus root 97 by 2. Now this is a simple way but suppose you could have many questions like this say you may have x square um, plus uh, um, qx plus 7q is equal to 3x square or 3px square plus px minus p. Now how do we solve this? We need to collect all the x square terms together. So if you take this to this side you get 3px square minus x square which will become 3p minus 1x square. px minus qx is p minus q into x and plus the last one that is minus p minus 7 q is 0. Once you have this our a is going to be this, b is going to be this and c is going to be this r. Then we use the same formula calculate b square minus 4ac and go about solving and get the equation in terms of uh, sorry get the roots in terms of p and q. Right. So let's see uh, what we have in store with us uh, for similar kind of questions and how we can solve them. Okay, now here we have an equation, the values for of x for the equation x square plus 9x plus 18 is equal to 6 minus 4x r. So in simple words, you have told what will be the solutions of this equation or find out the roots. Now we need to simplify this. Collect all the terms x square 9x minus 4x is 13x, 18 minus 6 is x square plus 13x, 18 minus 6 is 12 and hence we solve it. <coughs> now whenever we calculate b square minus 4ac, b square minus 4ac in this case is going to be 13 square 169 minus 4 into 1, 4 into 12, 48, which will turn out to be 121. b square minus 4ac positive and a perfect square, so the roots are going to be rational roots, unequal and rational. So we can use the formula in this case, which is going to be minus b, which is going to be minus 13, plus or minus root 121 by 2a, which is going to be 2. So it's going to be minus 13 plus 11 plus or minus 11 by 2 which would be either minus 13 minus 11 by 2 or minus 13 plus 11 by 2. Minus 13 minus 11 by 2 is going to be minus 24 by 2 minus 12 minus 13 plus 11 is minus 2 minus 2 by 2 minus 1. So here the order is not important. The roots could be written as minus 12 and minus 1 or minus 1 and minus 2. So among these options you have is 1, 12, minus 1, minus 12, 1, minus 12 and obviously this. Now in these kind of questions, the smarter way of doing instead of using this, we can split this up. 
find out the numbers which on multiplying give 1 into 12 12 you multiply 1 and 12 12 the numbers which on multiplying give 12 and on adding give 13 so the two numbers 1 into 12 is 12 and 1 plus 12 is 13 so we can write this 13 x as x plus 12 x so out of three terms we are able to split the middle term as two more terms so we get four terms so we make pairs out of this in these two for example you take x as a common factor and you get x plus 1 plus 12 into x plus 1 is 0 hence we get x plus 1 into x plus 12 is 0. Now here we have a situation which is a very important rule in the concept of numbers that whenever the product of two numbers is 0 mind you only if the product is 0 not for the product being 1 2 or 3 or anything Whenever the product of the two numbers is 0, either the first number is 0 or the second number is 0. So, if the first number is 0, x plus 1 is 0 or x plus 12 is 0. So, x would be minus 1 or x would be minus 12. Or we could use the formula method. Formula method is standard. You can use it for any kind of uh, quadratic equation to be solved. This one would be more convenient only if the roots are, in any case, rational and unequal okay so in any case our solution is minus 1 minus 12 minus 12 minus 1 so we have minus 1 and minus 12 okay what do we have next what we have next is in hand is this okay here we have an equation in indices 2 raised to 2x plus 3 minus 3 squared into 2 raised to x plus 1 is 0 if you see there is this 2 raised to x over here, even here there seems to be a 2 raised to x. So we need to split this up. So we have 2 raised to 2x plus 3 can be written as 2 raised to 2x into 2 raised to 3. Using the rule that a raised to m into a raised to n is a raised to m plus n. Common base, different indices, multiply. Minus 3 squares. Sorry, this is minus, minus 3 square, which is 9 into 2 raised to x plus 1 is 0. Now, this here we are going to use the rule a raised to mn can be written a raised to m, the whole raised to n. So, this can be written as 2 raised to x, the whole square into 2 cube, which is 8. So, it's actually 8 into 2 raised to x, the whole square, minus 9 into 2 raised to x plus 1 is 0. Now, we have actually brought it to something that resembles a quadratic equation because whatever is a variable in the second term, it is the same variable that is being squared here. So, we can take 2 raised to x, we can take it as say m or something. So, the equation becomes 8m square minus 9m plus 1 is 0. So, it is enough to solve this equation. Now here again we can do check whether we can split the middle term 8 into 1 is 8. We have to find out two numbers which on multiplying give 8 and on adding give minus 9. So it's going to be it could be 2 and 4 but 2 and 4 minus 2 and minus 4 on adding do not give minus 9 but minus 8 <coughs> minus 8m minus 1m do add up and give minus 9 and on multiplying they give 8. Now in these two you take 8m common and you get m minus 1, minus 1 into m minus 1 is 0. So we get m minus 1 into 8m minus 1 is equal to 0. Again product of two numbers is 0. So either m minus 1 is 0 or 8m minus 1 is 0. So which means that m is 1 or m is 1 by 8. So you may think at this stage, oh, I've got, I'm done. But this is not, and you look around, it's not tallying with what we have. It doesn't seem to be, there's no 1 and 1 by 8, and there's no option, none among these. This is where the alarm bell should ring. Remember, m is a value which we have added. So we need to convert it to whatever it was. We had taken 2 raised to x as m, so we need to substitute as 2 raised to x as 1. Or, 2 raised to x is 1 by 8. Now 1 by 8 can be written as 2 raised to minus 3. 
because 1 by 8 is 1 upon 2 cube which is 2 raised to minus 3 this again can be written as 2 raised to x is equal to 2 raised to 0 or 2 raised to x is 2 raised to minus 3 so the bases are equal hence the indices have to be equal or x is equal to minus 3 so it's either 0 or minus 3 that we get as a solution so the values of x are 0 and minus 3 so it's an equation which is not originally a quadratic equation but we can convert it to the quadratic form and go about solving it right so our solution is 0 comma minus 3 that is this and yes we do have it right now from here we move over to the next one which is going to be oh we have a very interesting it looks a little complicated so we'll just write this down the values of 4 plus 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4 plus it doesn't mean plus infinity 4 plus the same 1 upon 4 plus is repeated infinity number of times so if we just write it down it's going to be 4 plus 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4 plus plus infinity times that is this 1 upon 4 plus is repeated infinity times now it looks a little complicated but how do we do it if you see whatever expression is getting repeated we take it as x now what is getting repeated is 4 plus 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4 plus this part now how many times this is taken is we we don't know it is infinity times so we take this thing as x right so hence this 4 would remain as it is plus 1 upon this 4 plus but we have taken 4 plus 1 upon 4 plus whatever it is as x so it's going to be 4 plus 1 upon x but 4 plus 1 upon x is actually the same x because this thing one more than this is the same as x which is infinity times so 4 plus 1 upon x is the same as the same thing because 4 plus 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon whatever is also the same both these are equal so now here we have a situation wherein the equation equation becomes 4 plus 1 upon x equal to x now we need to solve it you can take LCM or multiply all the terms by x and you get 4x plus x into 1 by x is 1 x into x x so you get x square minus 4x minus 1 is 0. We need to find the value of x which is the same as the value of this particular expression. <clears throat> now here b square minus 4ac is minus 4 square which is 16 minus 4 into 1 into minus 1 minus 4 into 1 is minus 4 into minus 1 is plus 4 which is going to be 20 and you have x which is going to be minus b minus b is going to be minus of minus 4 plus or minus b square minus 4ac that is 20 upon 2a which is 2 into 1 so ultimately this becomes x is equal to 4 plus or minus 20 which can be written as root 4 into root 5 upon 2 which would become 4 plus or minus 2 root 5 by 2 we can take 2 as a common factor you get 2 plus or minus root 5 the whole upon 2 so 2 gets cancelled that means x is 2 plus or minus root 5 but x is nothing but this expression that means the value of this expression is 2 plus or minus root 5 so we have two options seem to be repeating themselves so we can take the first one as the answer so it's going to be 2 plus or minus root 5 right so thus this is how we can do by substitution that is whenever some term is getting repeated infinity we can take the same term as x right how we tackle these kind of questions and of course our option is b We'll come across similar kind of question, at least one more such uh, situation further ahead. Okay, next what we have is, oh yeah, we found this out. 
this is now it's root of 6 plus root of 6 plus root of 6 plus so and so infinity times so it's if you put it up in simple words it's going to be root of 6 plus root of 6 plus root of 6 plus root of 6 plus this is infinity times you have to find the value the value of this particular expression similar to the previous question we have here now if you see this root of 6 plus root of 6 plus so and so is repeated so we let root of 6 plus root 6 plus root 6 plus whatever infinity times let this be equal to x now hence this entire expression becomes root of 6 plus this thing we have taken it as x and it is the same as the same expression because 1 6 more is not going to affect so it is the same as x now we need to solve this so what do we do we square both sides when you square both sides you get square root of 6 plus x the whole square which is x plus 6 and square of x is x square and hence if you take everything to this side you get 0 is equal to x square minus x minus 6 which is the same as equal to 0. Now this we can split up and do it or use b square minus 4ac. It is a very simple sum. Whenever you get a quadratic equation check whether we can get it. So if you see 1 into minus 6 is minus 6. Two numbers which on multiply give minus 6 and on adding give minus 1 or minus 3 and 2. So we split this up as x square minus 3x plus 2x minus 6 is 0 this gives you x bracket x minus 3 plus 2 bracket x minus 3 is 0 so x minus 3 into x plus 2 is 0 so we get it as x minus 3 is 0 or x plus 2 is 0 so we get x as 3 or x is equal to minus 2 so sorry minus 2 we have here so either the value of this expression is 3 or the value of this expression is minus 2 now among these we have to check which among these there is no minus 3 there is no 4 so among these this seems this is working at least it is one of these solutions so the value of this could be 3 but definitely not 2 or minus 3 or minus 4 so this is quite uh, similar to the question that we did earlier wherein we substituted the repeated value as x okay so hence this is how we solve it and let's see what we have and yes it is 3 okay from here we move to the next one which is okay if x is equal to m is one of the solutions of the equation 2x squared plus 5x minus m is 0. The possible values of m are so and so. This is a very simple one. Now, it is told that x is one of the solutions. So, 2x squared plus 5x minus m is 0. Now, it is told that m is one of the solutions. which means that when we substitute x as equal to m in one of them, then the equation is valid. So, we can put x is equal to m. So, you get 2m squared plus 5m minus m is 0. This simplifies to 2m square plus 4m is equal to 0. Now here we need to be careful. You may tend to say let's cancel away m. Cancelling away m would mean dividing by m and division by no number is valid. If a number is valid only if the number is sure not to be 0. So we don't know what the value of the variable is, so we cannot divide by m. But we can divide by 2, all of them. We can divide by 2, so that, because 2 is definitely not 0. So when you divide all the terms by 2, which is the same as cancelling by 2, you get m square plus 2m is 0. Now here we need to factorize. So we take m common and you get m plus 2 is 0, which means that, again, product of two numbers is 0. So either the first number is 0 or the second term is 0 which means that m is 0 or m equal to minus 2. So we have 0 or minus 2. So among these 
this is the one that you are in. Because you are saying that M is one of the solutions. So wherever there is X. Because there could be a scope for confusion. Suppose sometimes you have an equation having 3 or 4 X, P, Q. But it is taken for granted if it is P, Q, X, M, N. Only X is taken as a variable. P, Q, M, N and all are taken as the constants. Okay. So thus the solution for this is going to be 0, comma minus 2. And we have it right here. Okay, so where does this trail lead us to? Next situation happens to be, okay. Now here, a solution of this part of the quadratic equation a plus b minus 2c into x squared, 2a minus b minus c into x plus c plus a minus 2b is 0 is so and so. Now here, solving this equation as we did right now would be very, very laborious task. So the best option that is there is Substitute the value of x in each of these and check which of them will be valid. Now, in all, so in other words, if there is a minus 2c, there has to be a plus 2c to cancel it. Only then the whole thing will become 0. Now, hence if we put x as 1 over here, there is a minus c. You take any one of the variables and a plus c, but min minus 2c remains the same. So, we could possibly check substituting x as minus 1. So if you substitute x as minus 1, you get a plus b minus 2c into 1 square which is 1 plus 2a minus b minus c into minus 1 plus c plus a minus 2. We have to check whether it is a solution. So we won't put it equal to 0. We are going to check whether it is equal to 0. This would become a plus b minus 2c 2a into minus 1 minus 2a minus b into minus 1 plus b minus c into minus 1 plus c plus c plus a minus 2b. So what do we have here? We have minus 2c, c plus c, 2c and minus 2c get cancelled. So that will be equal to 0. a plus a, 2a and minus 2a get cancelled. b plus b 2b and minus 2b get cancelled and yes left hand side is 0 right hand side is also 0. So as I repeat putting just substitute 1 in any one of them you will find that you could even check in terms of a. If you take a also you will see that none of the a values are getting nullified you end up getting 4a. So there is no chance of this equation becoming 0 except when x is equal to minus 1. So, x is equal to minus 1 is the solution for this particular equation. So, and yes, we do have x is equal to minus 1 as the solution. Okay, so whenever you have these kind of a questions, it will be a smarter move to substitute the values and then find. Okay. Now, here you have one more equation. The values of x in the equation 7 bracket x plus 2p the whole square plus 5p square is equal to 35xp plus 117p square are what? Looks mighty big. But actually, it could be a very simple one. In this case, we could substitute the values and do it and see how it works. Or the other way, we could open the bracket and do it. So, if you open the bracket, you get 7 bracket x square plus 2 into x into 2p, 4xp, plus 4p square, plus 5p square is equal to 35xp, plus 117p, 17p square. Now we will collect all the x square xp terms. So 7 into x square is 7x square, 7 into 4xp that is 28xp, minus 35xp. Seven into four p square, which is twenty-eight p square plus five p square, that is thirty-three p square. And this one, you take it to the side, minus one one seven p square is zero. So this gives you seven x square minus seven x p, and thirty-three minus hundred and seventeen turns out to be sixty-seven plus seventeen will turn out to be minus 84 p square is 0. Now this is becoming very simple. You can divide throughout by 7 and you get x square minus px 
minus p square is 0. Now here it's very simple. You look at this minus and this minus or you can take it as ax square. Split up this minus in terms of this which to minus 12p square, I'm sorry, this is minus 12p square. Now here what we need to do, find out two numbers which on multiplying give minus 12 and on adding give minus 1. So it cannot be minus 6 and 2, multiplies and gives minus 12 but on adding gives minus 4. 4 and minus 3 also gives minus 12 but on adding will give plus 1. We want minus 1 so it's going to be x square minus 4px plus 3px minus 12p square is 0. In these two you can take x common and you get x minus 4p. You need to get x minus 4p here too. So you need to take out plus 3p as a common factor. So this will give you x minus 4p into x plus 3p is 0. So either x minus 4p is 0 or x plus 3p is 0 which means that x is equal to 4p or x is equal to minus 3p. Hence we get it. So we solve it accordingly we get x as 4p or x is minus 3p. The other option as I told you substitute it and see 4p minus uh, suppose you are putting 4p but here substituting would mean we have to substitute each of these values so that would mean 4 into 2 4 you have 2 into 4 8 substitutions will have to be checked up which is going to be make it complicated notwithstanding the fact that there could be careless mistakes while well, simplifying. Instead of that, you solve it this way, it would make sense. Okay, so our option is going to be 4p or x is minus 3p. As I said, repeated, whenever you have this kind of an equation which seem to be complicated, simplify, open the bracket, collect all the x square terms, collect all the x terms and finally put the non-x terms and don't mix up p. p is going to be a constant, it is not the value that uh, that is unknown over here. So you have to find out x in terms of p and other constants. Okay, so our solution is going to be 4p or minus 3p and yes, we do have it here. So from here, we move over to the next situation. Okay, here you have on solving root of, so we have root of x upon 1 minus x plus root of 1 minus x upon x is 13 upon 6. We need to solve this. Now this again looks very complicated just like that 4 plus 1 upon 4 plus but actually you can do this by a very simple, simple process, a very simple substitution. If you see both these are reciprocals of each other x upon 1 minus x, 1 minus x. So suppose a is taken as root of x upon 1 minus x. This is going to be, hence this will become a and this will become 1 upon k is equal to 13 upon 6. So when you solve this, we get 13 by 6. You take LCM, you get a squared plus 1 upon a is 13 by 6. Cross multiply, you get 6a squared plus 6 is equal to 13a, right? So this becomes 6a square minus 13a plus 6 is 0. Now again we multiply 6 and 6, 36. Two numbers on multiplying, you need to find two numbers which on multiplying gives 36. That is we need to find two factors of 36 which on adding also give minus 13. It could be 12 and 3, minus 12 and 3 but these two multiply and give 36 but on adding they do not give minus 13. So the only option that is there is that we have is minus 9a minus 4a plus 6 is 0. So we take here 3a common and you get 2a minus 3. And we need to take out some common factor so that the bracket becomes the same as this. And you end up getting 2a minus 3 into 3a minus 2 is 0 which would mean 2a minus 3 is 0 or 
3 a minus 2 is 0 if you simplify you get a is 3 by 2 or a is 2 by 3 now a is 3 by 2 or a is 2 by 3 but a is not what we want we take it as this so we end up getting root of x plus 1 minus x is equal to 3 by 2 or root of x upon 1 minus x is 2 by 3. So this is how we get. Now we need to square both sides. When you square both sides, you get x upon 1 minus x is 9 by 4 or x upon 1 minus x is 4 by 9. Cross multiply you get 4x is equal to 9 minus 9x which is the same as 13x is 9 and x is 9 by 13. This is one option which is not featuring here. Or cross multiply you get 9x is 4 minus 4x and you get 9x plus 4x is 13x is 4 and you get x as 4 upon 13. So either x is 1 by 13 or x is 4 by 13. So we have done this by substitution method but remember as in one of the previous sums you need to see that you resubstitute the values otherwise you will be confused. You are getting the value as 3 by 2 and 2 by 3 they don't seem to be featuring here. So immediately you need to get a trigger bell have you resubstituted and once you get root we need to square both sides to just nullify the effect of the root. So it is either 9 by 13 which doesn't feature but the other one 4 by 13 is featuring. So this is definitely one of the solutions of this equation. Right and we do have 4 by 13.